greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible to all in three years. Turning our Bibles to Psalm 44. Psalm 44 is a national appeal to God in the time of great suffering or great disaster. In the first eight verses, the psalmist speaks about the past, how God had really been close to them, God had helped them, God had brought them out safely and all the good things that the Lord had done. First verse, it says, We have heard it with our ears, O God. Our ancestors have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. Now, these people had uh, very clearly learned from their ancestors as to who God was and what he had done uh, in their lives. And uh, they expected the same thing to happen in them because they knew that their God was immutable. But many a times we need to recognize that though God is immutable, God is a God of variety. He works in various different ways. In fact, um, we see that God never spoke the same way to two different people in all scripture. Every time he spoke to people, it was unique. God is a God of variety. And we just can't put God into a box and say, you've done that thing to that person at that point of time, that same way. So I want it the same way. No, God does things as seems best unto himself. The second verse, uh, he, they talk about uh, uh, how the Lord had really granted them victory in, in, in various situations with your hand. You drove out the nations and planted our ancestors. You crushed the people and made our ancestors flourish. And now the psalmist was talking about how God brought them out of their um, bondage and he settled them in the land that had been promised. The people there were very strong enough, but God had really worked uh, for the welfare of uh, the Israelites and he had settled them. He planted them and uh, he flourished them. These two words are very, very beautiful words. One planting, two flourishing. There cannot be flourishing without planting. And if there is planting but no flourishing, there, there is no use. So God not only brought them into Canaan, but also flourished them in Canaan and brought great fruits to them. Third words, they say, it was not by the sword that they won the land, nor uh, did their arm bring them victory. It was your arm, your right hand and the light of your face, for you loved them. So uh, now uh, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, the warriors did not fight or their skills were in vain. The Bible always gives more priority for the Lord being on our side. And when the Lord is on our side, then our skills and all our efforts can really bear fruit. That's why uh, the psalmist writes, uh, you know, unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, its watchmen stand guard in vain. In other words, our efforts are, have to be blessed by the Lord. Without the Lord blessing our efforts, how much ever you toil, it will not really produce what it ought to produce. And so the psalmist says, it was not by the sword of our hands. Yes, there was a sword. Yes, we fought. But it was not because of that. It was because of your right arm. And it was because of the light of your face. Now, what are these uh, two things? One thing is the power of the Lord and the other thing is the favor of the Lord. The arm of the Lord shows his strength to save, his power to save. He was working on their behalf. He was he was fighting on their behalf and not just that, he was favorable towards them because he loved them, the Bible very clearly says. So God's love when it is upon us, he doesn't just have a passive favor upon us, but he also have has an active uh, unleashing of his power towards uh, us. So um, God's active uh, participation and also his uh, uh, love towards us is very crucial for our spiritual victory. And in fourth verse, he says, you are my king and my God, who's de who decrees victories for Jacob. So there can be a, a, a physical king, there can be a practically an, a human king, but they are um, just puppet kings. You are our real king, you are our real God. And you decree victories for Jacob. And then um, though uh, you, uh, uh, through you, we push our enemies back. Uh, and uh, through you, we trample our foes uh, through your name. So um, it was total uh, standing upon the Lord. It was totally uh, leaning upon the Lord, trusting upon the Lord uh, 
and the Lord gave them victory. And in verse 8, he says, In you we make all our boastings all day long. We will praise your name forever. Now, this is a very crucial thing. When God gives us victory, we just can't take the glory. We, we cannot take the glory in anything that the Lord does. All the glory belongs to him. That's why even in the Lord's Prayer, in the final word, the Lord Jesus says, for uh, the glory, honor, and power belong to him forever and ever. He is the one who gets all of this. But now the situation has changed. And uh, from verse 9 to 22, we see that this uh, same state of Israel was going through a very hard time. The ninth verse, uh, they say, but now you've rejected us, you've humbled us, you no longer go out with our armies. Now, our armies are there, our ammunition is there, but you are not going with us. Lord, it's just your presence that, that is very, very important. In our Christian life, we need to recognize that all Christian uh, doctrines and all Christian uh, thoughts and rituals are good, but without God, without God as a person, all of them cannot accomplish anything. And um, uh, if you are not uh, uh, with us, then we will retreat before the enemy and our adversaries have plundered us. Or in other words, you are our strength. You, Because of you, we stand. And because of you, we flourish. That's what he said. Now that the Lord is not on that behalf, now they are, they are not able to flourish. They are not able to uh, stand against their enemy. They are being devoured and uh, they are being sold as slaves uh, for a pittance. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, he says uh, in verse 13, we are, we are uh, put to great reproach, great shame. Uh, everybody around us are laughing. Now, honor and name and glory comes from the Lord. The Lord is not with us. Then uh, we, we're going to lose all of these things. And uh, they say that people shake their head uh, at us. Um, and I will live in disgrace all day long, uh, just uh, taking the uh, revenge and the taunts of my enemies. And um, verse 17 onwards, uh, the pit changes and he says, Lord, we, we are right with you. Uh, we, we have not gone against you. We have not sinned against you. Yet why has this come upon us? Uh, why have you crushed us? Why have you left us? Uh, and uh, they really don't have an answer. Um, and uh, uh, if, if at all we had forgotten you, then you would have known it. But what should we do now, Lord? Uh, in verse 23, he, he speaks in a poetic language. You know, the Bible says, uh, the God who protects Israel does not sleep or slumber. But he uses the word in verse 23, uh, Awake, Lord, why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. So this allegory language, allegory language, this is not a, a literal language. He's, uh, in fact, asking the Lord to interfere. And that's his presenting as if the Lord uh, has to awaken himself and the Lord has to come uh, to fight for them. And they are crushed to the dust. If the Lord doesn't come, it's over. That is Christian life. Unless the Lord interferes, we are gone. If the Lord had not been for us, we would have been destroyed. If the Lord uh, has has not fought our battles, we would have been defeated. So this should always be the predicament of a Christian. But what should we really do if uh, uh, it appears as if God is not working for us? We have uh, uh, two very important suggestions. Uh, Isaiah in chapter 50 and verse 10, it says, Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let him who walks in the dark and who has no light, trust in the name of their God and rely upon their God. So don't give up your trust. Keep on trusting on him. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 18 and verse 1, it says, Then Jesus told uh, his disciples a parable to show them that they ought not give up, but continuously pray. So these are two things when you don't understand in the month. Keep on trusting him. Keep on trusting the character of God. Though you may not see uh, it uh, feasible, though you might not see anything working, even in the dark, keep trusting him and also keep praying. These two things together will, will definitely rouse the Lord to work upon our lives. Gracious Heavenly Father, help us to be able to lean upon you at every single point of time. Though our mind cannot comprehend your interference and your intervention. In Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.